Don't forget to search for XL is Fun at Facebook and then add as friend. You also might try to do it at Twitter. Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 647. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 647. Hey, in this trick here, we have a, a checkbook register and as we add new amounts, we want a line chart. Here, let me move this line chart over here to show you the end result. As we add new records here, We'll say 8 slash 2 slash, no, just 8, 2. This will be check 103. And we're going to take out um, 1,500. OK, so we want this chart to automatically update to tell us our check book account balance in, in a line chart. So let's go over here. It's really going to involve doing a couple steps. We'll make a formula here. We'll make a chart. I mean, we'll make a chart. Then we have to make dynamic ranges with a formula, save them as a defined name, and insert those into the chart. So let's do it. First thing in, first thing is we have date, check number or deposit, description, amount in, amount out, and our balance. So we want a formula here that we can copy all the way down to our t bottom of our template, however big it is. Now, the idea here is we're always going to take the one cell above the balance and either subtract the amount out or add the amount in. Well, we don't have to do individual formulas. We can do that all in one formula. Equals the one above plus the amount two cells to my left, the amount in minus this. And the reason why we can do that is there's always going to be, if there's something here, there's going to be a zero there. And if there's something here, there's going to be nothing there. Okay. Now that formula works all the way down, but really it's kind of annoying and it will mess up the chart if we keep this. So we need to do something dynamic. We use an if function to turn on and off the calculating ability. Now we have to pick something that will turn it on and off. And the way we do that is we say, hey, we're always entering a date. So whenever this is blank, then I want to show a blank here. Otherwise, if something's showing, then please use the formula. So we'll click here and hit F2. And I'm simply going to click right here and say, if this cell reference right over here, this is a relative cell reference. If that is, this is the logical test, true or false. If that is equal to double quote, double quote is blank, comma. Now, we have our logical test, true or false. The value if true, well, if it is blank, what do we want? The value if true is double quote, double quote. Now, in essence, that's the turning on and off of the calculating. But re really, what we're doing is the value of true, what we're dumping into the cell is a blank, comma. Otherwise, we want to use our formula. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Now I'm going to double click and send it down because there's something below. It works just fine. All right, so there's a problem with this because you can see this is showing right here. I'm going to come right here and hit F2. You can see that the relative cell reference is this many over and this up. So actually, we want to edit this formula. This needs to be. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six cell references to my left. So I'm just going to click and drag it down. Now that'll work. Control Enter. Double click and send it down because there's formulas below. It repopulates all of those cells. All right, now the next thing is we need to uh, create dynamic ranges bef and create a defined name. Then we'll create our chart and put those defined names into the chart. First, for our ranges, both of these ranges, we need the balance column and the date column. We are going to need to know how tall the range is. Well, we can simply use the count function. Count counts numbers. So I'm going to say this whole column right here. And this could be however big you want. Right, right now, it's just going to see three numbers, so it counts three. So both of the ranges in the chart should be, for date, it should be three tall. And for all the numbers, it should be three tall. These numbers will be plotted on the vertical axis. And that will determine the line. And these will be on the horizontal axis. They will be the categories. Next, we need to create a formula for dynamic range. Offset is a great function. You could also use index. I have uh, notes up here actually on this sheet right here. 
So if you want to use index instead, watch that video right there. But here's the deal. Index is only if you have huge data sets. If you just have a checkbook, then go ahead and use offset. And offset is great because it will define a dynamic range. You just need to give it five arguments. Really, it's just, hey, where does your range start? If you want to move away from the starting range, for us, for example, that's going to be our starting range. If you want to move away, how many rows, how many columns? And then please tell me how tall and how wide your range is. So reference, we're always going to start right there. And I'm going to hit the F4 key because we're going to put this up into the uh, def name manager. Comma, how many rows from this A16 starting point do we want to go up or down? None. So I'm putting a comma. Do we need to move to the left or the right from that starting position? No way. So I'm putting a comma. Now the height, that's just this. F4. And by the way, this 3 will work for both ranges. So that's it, the 3. And this will change as we add new numbers down here. That count will change, 4, 5, etc. Finally, the width. Notice the square brackets. The square brackets always mean that the argument is optional. By default, it assumes that it's one uh, column wide. So I'm going to leave it out and just put close parentheses. That little simple formula right there, I'm going to copy it first because I'm going to use it over here again. Now, two ways we can check to see if this is doing what we think it's going to do. One is you can hit the F9 and see, sure enough, it got those numbers there. I'm going to Control Z. To enter this formula into the cell, I'm going to Control Shift Enter. Now I could just come down here and put uh, just to test it 81, and then I'm going to put just to test it. Notice the four updated from our count. Now I'm going to come here and hit the F9. Sure enough, it updated. Escape because I don't want to hard code those in. Now I'm going to uh, delete this. Just that was just to test. Now I want to do our next formula. Control V. Now this is the exact same formula. Guess what? All I need to do is move this cell reference. So I'm going to do that same trick we just did a second ago. I'm going to go brrrr and move it over there. And now this one is going to define this range because the offset is still going to go three down, but it's going to start from where? From there. Control Shift Enter. Okay. Now both of these formulas need to go into to a, what's called a define name. So I'm going to click here, highlight it, Control C, Escape. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control F3. That opens up the name manager. And how do you like that? I have still have these in there, so I'm going to quickly delete these. These are the ones I was using on the other sheet. And now we want to say new. Now this is for the balance column, so I'm going to put balance and uh, I'm going to put uh, underscore. When you do this, if you're following along, the underscore will be on this sheet. This one, you go ahead and just put balance. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to hit the delete key. And then I'm going to control V. That's our formula. Now, before I, oh, I'm going to click OK. And now we can test it here, just like we tested it down in the cells. But now, if we click on this Collapse button, it'll show us the dancing ants, which a range usually does when you put it in a formula. Sure enough, it got it right. I'm going to click Close, and I'm going to come over here and scoop this out. I'm going to highlight it, Control-C, Escape, Control-F3, New, Date. I'm going to put an underscore if you're trying it on this sheet, then you don't use an underscore. Highlight, Delete, Control-V, click OK, test it. It's working. Uncollapse it. Click Close. Now we're ready to create our chart. Now, the tricky thing about dynamic charts is that you have to create your chart first and then insert those defined names. So I'm going to create the chart. I'm going to highlight the date, just these, and the label on the top, because that'll be uh, the series name. I'm going to hold the Control key to highlight areas not next to each other. Highlight it. I go up to Insert. Charts, line, I'm going to pick the first one. I'm going to point to the edge here when I see that dynamic, that diagonal black arrow. I'm going to hold Shift and click and drag in just to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to click right there and hit Delete. I don't need that. Now, I'm going to insert my names. 
I have my ribbons very small. It's the context sensitive. If you click out here, you don't see them. If you click on the chart, you do design. And then in the data groups, select data. And select data is really the power of the charting engine because you can do all sorts of amazing things that the automatic chart wizard doesn't do. Now I'm going to click here on balance and click edit. Right? Here's a very important point. This one's fine. That's the name right there. But the series name, the way you do dynamic names, is you got to keep that sheet reference part in and highlight just the cells and hit delete. Now we want to put our word balance there. You can even you could either type it out or hit F3. F3 and I'm going to put balance. I'm going to double click that. F3 is uh, paste name. Click OK. Edit over here. Very carefully get rid of the cell references but not the sheet reference. F3, date. Click OK. Now something interesting, if you click back over here and hit edit, notice it puts a workbook reference. So really that trick of leaving the sheet name Inserting the name was just a stepping stone to trick this to then get, because when we click OK, it puts a, um, the workbook, the name of the workbook, into the uh, series values. Also, that balance, if I click OK, click OK, I have a problem here. Let's go look. If I go look at the Control F3 right here, let me collapse this down a little bit. If I click on balance and click edit, right there you can see that it already has sheet references. So those sheet references are there, they're just in the defined name. Now I'm not sure what that um, error was. I'm hoping it was just a false alarm. Now let's go ahead and try this. I'm going to say on the, we have our automatic formulas here, our automatic charts here. eight slash one. This is a deposit. It already looked like it worked fine there and I'm going to come over here in the deposit. I'm going to deposit two thousand dollars. Sure now it works. Now on uh, eight slash two I'm going to write a check one zero three and I'm going to take out a thousand five hundred. So it looks like it's working just fine. So this was a checkbook with an automatic uh, balance column we created our count function just to count numbers. We created our two dynamic ranges with offset. We went up to define names, the name manager, and created those names with those formulas. Created the chart and inserted the uh, names in. By the way, if you click on there, you can see up here there's the series function. And sure enough, just like uh, we would expect, there's the uh, workbook name right there and the date. So there's the workbook name and the uh, defined name. And down here is the workbook name and the defined name. All right, we'll see you next trick.